Hi everyone, it's Adam with Milo's Restoration. And today I've got a furniture flipping video for you. I'm going to take this kind of beat up dresser and put a green lacquer on it. And also I want to do a four years in furniture flipping video in review. Since it's been four years since I flipped my first piece, I thought, you know, now just as good a time of any to kind of talk about the business a little bit, something I never really do and just kind of give a few pointers and a few tips to help anyone get started or just you know if you're a veteran of the business just want to learn some more and take another perspective in this will be a good video for you so i got into furniture flipping after a pretty long stint in building furniture for clients and it was a fun time. I liked building furniture, but the equipment is prohibitively expensive to really be competitive. And obviously, if you're building a custom piece of furniture, it's probably going to be a pretty costly process for you and your client. So the value proposition of furniture flipping to me was just really amazing because you could take a $50 dresser, for instance, and turn it into something that could sell from anywhere to two to $800. And the, you know, the, the possibilities are really endless. So like many of you, I'm sure I started after watching a few videos on Facebook. I flipped my first piece. It was like a Drexel corner desk and it had like, you know, some kind of chalk paint on it, I'm sure. It really wasn't a very good looking piece compared to the stuff that I do today. But you know what? It got me interested in the business. So that's all that counts really, I guess. So once you've kind of watched some videos or self-taught or however you've chosen to learn how to finish and you've got a product that people want you now have to determine a price point and this is going to go for painting services so let's say that you're just offering painting services a lot of what i do is just basically clients that find me who want me to paint for them and also for furniture flips so you have to determine a price process for both of these and I think a lot of it is just really whatever you think the piece is worth and also it's got to include you know your time and materials and the markup that you want to charge on that so obviously if you have a piece that's way too expensive and nobody wants it well you have a problem but on the other hand if your piece is too cheap and everybody wants it and you can't make any money on it well you have another problem so you have to locate that area where is the highest you know cost that you can really charge but also still sell your items at a reasonable rate some people will choose to sit on their items and, and charge a higher rate i think if you have a large shop that works but for me i try to move things quickly So I also kind of think it's important to identify a niche and get really good at it. You know, you could be somebody who just restores mid-century pieces and resells them, or you could be somebody who, like me, does kind of production finishes. You know, I just try to replicate factory finishes, and I do a lot of the high-gloss stuff. People have kind of come to me for that, and I've built a little bit of a following on that kind of reputation. Or you could be somebody who does more of the artistic stuff with stencils and gold leaf and things like that. I've never personally been that person. I'm just a production guy. I'm not really an artsy person, but I kind of wish I was sometimes because I see the things that people create and I can really see how people love to have those kinds of things in their home. So after you've kind of been doing this for a little while, you can kind of pick a direction in what you want to do. and you can do client services you know I do a lot of that so basically people bring me furniture and I paint it or I pick it up or you can do just furniture flipping where you're just buying and selling or you know you can kind of do a mix of both I've done a mix of both and I think that there's positives and negatives to both sides and I'm going to talk about those now so you kind of have two choices once you start furniture flipping. Do you want to just buy furniture pieces, refinish them, and resell them? Or do you want to start offering services to clients like lacquering or restoration of pieces or, you know, basically doing a flip on their piece that they supply to you? 
or you can do something where you buy something for a specific client and then, you know, do what they want with it. Now, I think that there's benefits to both. Obviously, I've said that. Um, the benefit to doing both is that you bring in the extra business of people that want that custom touch. The drawbacks of that is that you're kind of setting the stage less than you are whenever you sell something. Whenever you sell something, you have a lot more control over it. You know, if I'm selling furniture, just flips. I don't offer delivery. I don't offer pickup. Um, people have to come whenever it's convenient to me to pick up the furniture. Whereas if you're offering client services, it's a little bit harder to do that. You're going to have to work around people's schedules and you're probably going to have to offer some kind of delivery and some kind of pickup. So that's just something to consider. So the way that I've handled this in the past of how I take on selling furniture, flipping furniture versus uh, commission pieces is that I'm just kind of picky about what jobs I take on. A lot of the times it has nothing to do with the person that, I mean, sometimes it does. Sometimes a client just gives me red flags and I don't want to work for them. But a lot of the times it's just basically, let's say that somebody wants to restore, you know, a, a dining table or refinish a dining table with like 12 chairs, that kind of thing. The price for that is going to be astronomical. Like for me to strip all those pieces and refinish them and redo them, it's going to be crazy. So I just, generally speaking, will probably say no to that job. Not because I don't want to do it. I do want to do it. I really would love to do it if I could. But I can't feed my family, you know, losing money on a three-week job. It's just not something I can do. So obviously there are people who have figured that out. I am not one of them. Now that being said, you know, it's also not just about getting jobs that are in and out quick. I think that you have to do good work, obviously, and I do good work. But I just can limit the amount of stain grade and strip and refinish jobs that I do for customers. I will do them for videos and for little pieces and things that I like. But that's more just for fun, and I don't have the client expectation there. It's just more about me finding a piece and stripping it and refinishing and selling it and when it comes to furniture flipping it's the same way it's hard for me to do an armoire here because I don't have anybody to help me move it or transport it so just some things that you have to consider whenever you get into this business so if we've talked about client services now we can kind of talk about furniture flipping on you know different avenues so I think the best thing that you can do for furniture flipping is really eyeballs you know getting in front of people in person not over social media if you have a storefront that you can sell at for an affordable price that has a lot of foot traffic i think that's great and i think you'll be able to ask higher prices than if you just sell on facebook the benefit of facebook is that it's pretty low energy you know a lot of the times you can kind of just sell based on you know sitting at your house or whatever and they'll come pick it up whenever it's convenient for you and whenever it's convenient for them and the worst they can say is no, and the worst you can say is no. So really, that's it. You just, it's easier to do, it's easier to deal with. But the negative of that is that obviously somebody will probably at some point not want to buy your piece. I've had pieces that have sat forever that nobody wanted to buy, and I was just forced to either donate them or sell them for basically no money at all. So another kind of decisions that you'll have to make is what kind of equipment do you want to use and what kind of products do you want to use. And with the products that you use, I'm going to go ahead and include about some information about warranties. Now, I don't, I, I, I guess you could say that I would offer warranties on my pieces per se, in the sense that obviously if I have a piece that has a major adhesion issue, I'll probably fix that. But if there's a piece and somebody, you know, runs into it or something like that or damages a drawer, it's really hard to warranty that at a lower price point. You might consider raising your prices and offering a warranty. That can be something that might be attractive to clients. But I really am the 
tendency to believe that warranties can get abused pretty easily. So I think that it's best to just kind of, you know, be reasonable with your clients. I've never had a really somebody call me about something that I've done before. Um, not at least for the first year or two. I have had a person that wanted me to touch up some spots on a table that I did for them. But it was just, it was probably after two or three years and I agreed to do it and they agreed to pay me. But, um, you know, with that comes with what kind of products do you want to use? So I use a really good process and I'm very confident in my process. I know that my process is definitely going to last for a long time. I use a pre-catalyzed lacquer or I use a 2K polyurethane or I use some kind of good cabinet grade enamel. I don't use latex wall paint. I don't use mineral paints. I don't use stuff like that. I'm not saying that all mineral paints are bad. I'm not saying that all wall paints and uh, furniture flipping paints are bad. But I am saying that, you know, hard waxes and waxes and stuff like that are not going to be quite as durable. So once you've kind of identified what products you want to use, you need to think about equipment. So going back to a point that I made very early on in this video, I really did get burnt out on buying equipment for woodworking, so I like to keep my furniture flipping equipment minimal. And I'm going to talk about that now as far as what I think, what kind of equipment you need, and what I would like to have if I could start over from day one with zero equipment. So I think that starting with no equipment, here's what I would say is probably the best thing to do. You need to determine what kind of paint you want to use. So if you want to use water-based uh, 2K polyurethanes or something like that, or a 1K or cabinet enamels, I like the Graco Quick Shot. I think it's a good sprayer. It's a great airless sprayer for furniture flipping because you can use small amounts of furniture. And you have the atomization power of airless. Now if you want to use lacquers, conversion varnishes, and... Uh, you know, even some of the mineral paints and the oil-based paints, you'll need some kind of air spray gun. So like an HVLP turbine sprayer or a compressor gun. You can get a pretty good compressor for 1200 bucks, and I'd say all in with everything you need to spray, you'll probably be somewhere around two grand to $2,500 to get a good setup for a conventional spray setup. A turbine, probably going to be you can get them for as cheap as six or seven hundred dollars and as expensive as two thousand. But Harbor Freight does make a pretty good sprayer for two thousand for like four or five hundred dollars. That's a turbine, just a good option. And uh, obviously a sander. You need a good sander. I like the Surf Prep sander. Um, I like the combination of a random orbit, so like a five or a six inch random orbit sander, like a circular one as well as a sander like surf prep because for doing quick finish removal or for flattening large surfaces it's a good idea to have a five or six inch random orbit circular sander and for detail sanding the surf prep sander is pretty much irreplaceable so yeah there's always the option to buy more equipment if you need it but i think that getting started you know you can get a pretty or really good setup you know for under three thousand dollars you can pretty much doing kind of what i'm doing and obviously you know hand tools table saws stuff like that all of that can come as necessary but to just take a piece of furniture and flip it and sell it you really don't need much you know especially if your pieces don't need a ton of work which is what I advise anyway. I advise to find pieces that don't need a ton of work. That's always better, especially drawers. That's a losing battle usually. So also, whenever you're selling furniture, um, I mean, whenever you're painting furniture, you need a place to paint. And if you can, find a room in your garage or something like that and find a way to put proper painting ventilation on it. That's the best way to go. It'll keep dust out of your paint job. If you can't, you know, you can paint outside, but paint in a covered area with some good ventilation and obviously away from uh, any kind of environmental hazards that you might have. And also, one thing that I used to do 
is I would paint in the sun. That's really bad for your finishes. Don't do that. Try to find a way to not do that if you can. So yeah, that's just kind of, of the first of these videos that I've done. If it has a good response and people seem to like it, I'll make another one. I'll answer specific questions if people ask them. But yeah, that's just kind of my experience in furniture flipping and what I've seen over the years. It's definitely developed and it's definitely been a journey for me. And I'm still going strong today and I still enjoy it, even though sometimes it can be really tough. But, you know, uh, I don't think I'm going to quit doing it. So just something to consider it's it's a great business to try out you don't need fancy equipment it's nice to have but at the same time i think it's a pretty low budget way to start a side hustle in the grand scheme of things so here's the finished piece Webster Green lacquer with some new hardware and that kind of distressed uh, wallpaper that lines the drawers. This piece sold pretty quickly within a couple weeks of posting it. And I think I got three or four hundred dollars for it, something like that. And I probably paid 40 or 50, probably had 80 in materials. So yeah, that's this piece and it came out pretty good. I had a fun time doing it, and please subscribe if you like these videos, and tell me in the comments what you want to see more of. Thanks for watching.